Now, according to this problem, you have two large conducting plates P1 and P2 that are placed near to each other at a separation D, like this, right? Now, what happens is that P1 is given with a charge plus 2Q and the plate P2 is provided with a charge minus Q. Now, you have to find out what is going to be the potential difference between these plates P1 and P2. And then you have to choose the right option out of these given options. Understood? Yes? So, how are you going to proceed to find out the potential difference? First thing that you need to do is find out what is going to be the charge distribution on the place of this parallel plate capacitor. Right? And how do you do that? Can you see that the net charge on both the plates is not zero here? The net charge is 2Q minus Q, that is Q, right? So how do you find out the charge distribution? Well, I'm sure you know that the charge coming on the outer surfaces of both the plates P1 and P2 is going to be sigma Q by 2, right? Where sigma Q is the net charge on both the plates. So if there would have been equal and opposite charge, then the net charge would be zero, right? And the charge coming on the outer surfaces of both the plates would be zero. But here that is not the case. So in this case, you can see that 2Q minus Q is sigma Q. And from here, Q by 2 charge is going to come on the outer surfaces of the two plates. And if you are getting confused where we are getting this relation, then the simple logic that we apply to arrive at this is that in this case, the electric field inside the plates is going to be zero, not between the plates, but inside the conducting plates, right? Because you know that under electrostatic condition, electric field inside any conductor is zero. So you can arrive at this simple relation by using that logic, okay? So here we have the charge on the outer surfaces of both the plates to be equal to Q by 2, right? And the total charge on the plate P1 is 2Q. It means that the charge on its inner surface is going to be 2Q minus Q by 2, that is 3Q by 2. And the charge on the inner surface of the plate P2 is going to be minus 3Q by 2. Make sense, right? So we are done with the charge distribution and now we can use the formula to find out the potential difference by just taking the ratio Q by C, right? But remember that Q is the magnitude of charge on the inner surface of any one of these two plates, right? And how much is Q? Well, Q here is 3Q by 2, right? And the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, you already know, is epsilon naught A by D, right? So let's apply this and find out what is going to be the potential difference between the plates P1 and P2. And obviously here, P1 is going to be at a higher potential, right? So this is going to be Q, that is 3Q by 2, divided by epsilon naught A divided by D. So D will come in the numerator, and the potential difference we get as 3Q D divided by 2 epsilon naught Right? Interesting question, yes? So in this case, when the net charge on both the plates is not zero, we found out that the potential difference here is 3QD divided by 2 epsilon naught A. And option B in this case is the right option. So in this problem, you basically have to tell what could be the reason that a capacitor cannot be used as a battery. So let's go through these options one by one and reason them out. All right, what's option A? It cannot store a large amount of charge. Well, if you have a capacitor with large enough capacitance, then it can store large enough charge, right? And do remember that battery doesn't store charge. It provides energy to move charges, right? At the expense of chemical energy. So don't get confused. And anyway, we can reason that this statement is not right. Depending upon the capacitance, charge stored can be varied, right? How about 
it produces too much heat? Well, we know that heat depends upon various factors such as the current flown, the resistance of the connecting wire and what's connected to those wires, right? And the duration for which the current flows. So it's very vague to say that a capacitor always produces too much heat, right? So even this reason is not right. The heat produced depends upon various factors and you cannot say for sure that using a capacitor is always going to lead for more heat as compared to using a battery, right? And now first let's see the option D. It is very costly as compared to a battery. Well, with the recent developments in the material science and engineering, you can find cheap capacitors in the market as well, right? So although they will have lower capacity, but they are available. So you cannot say for sure even that the capacitors are costly as compared to a battery, right? And now let's come to option C. It gets discharged very rapidly. Well, don't you think that's true? You would have learned about the discharging of any capacitor, right? And you would have seen that in any case, if you use a capacitor, then the energy is provided very quickly in a short span of time if you use a capacitor as compared to a battery, right? So if you use a dry cell, then it lasts longer, right? So a dry cell can provide energy for a longer duration of time as compared to a capacitor. And that is why you will find the capacitors used in a camera for operating the flashlight, right? And you will also find its usage in the ceiling fans. Yes? So it means that the option C in this case is right. The capacitor cannot be used as a battery because it gets discharged very rapidly. Right? So in this case, you can tick option C as the right reason for this conceptual problem. Now, according to this problem, you have two identical metal sheets separated by distance D. Both of them have the area A, right? And they are charged by a battery of EMF E. Now, given that the charge remains constant, the separation between the place is increased by L. So the new separation becomes D plus L, right? You have to find out what is going to be the new capacitance and the new potential difference between these two plates, right? Now, how do you make sure that the charge remains constant? Well, when the capacitor is charged to the potential difference E, then the battery is removed, right? And uh, the handle that is used to increase the separation between the plates is an insulating handle. And that's how you make sure that the charge before and after is same on the two plates, right? So let's find out what is going to be the new capacitance first. Now think about this, the capacitance is going to increase or decrease well, the initial capacitance for sure is A epsilon naught divided by D, right? And the separation is increased. So you can see that the capacitance is inversely proportional to the separation. And that is why the capacitance is going to decrease when the separation increases. Yes. So what is going to be the new capacitance? Well, the new capacitance, let's say C dash is going to be A epsilon naught divided by the new separation that is D plus L. As simple as that. Yes. And now let's find out what is the initial charge. Because we know that the initial charge is going to be equal to the final charge. Right? So we can find this out by using the well-known formula Q is equal to C into V. So let's do that. The charge is going to be C that is A epsilon naught divided by D into E. Right? And this is going to be equal to the final charge as the separation is increased. Now, can you see from this equation, you can also say that 
c into v must be equal to c dash into v dash, right? And from here, we will find out what is going to be the new potential difference between the two metallic plates. Yes? So in one step, we are going to find out what is the value of v dash, right? So this is going to be c into e, that is a epsilon naught divided by d into e is equal to c dash, which now is a epsilon naught divided by d plus l and v dash, let's say this is e dash, okay? And from here, you can see that a epsilon naught gets cancelled out from both the sides and e dash is d plus l divided by d into e. Let's simplify it further. So this is 1 plus l by d into e and this is going to be the new potential difference between the two plates, right? So we found out in this case that option c is going to be the right option. So let's see what's happening in this problem. In this case, you have a parallel plate capacitor, which is charged, all right? Now what happens after charging the battery is removed and the separation between the plates of this capacitor is reduced, all right? So you have to choose the correct option out of these given options that talk, that talk about different physical quantities and if they if their value decreases or increases or remains constant. So you can go through the options. You can see that option A talks about electric field, option B about potential difference, C about capacitance as, and D about the electrostatic potential energy. So let's find this out. Now if the capacitor is charged initially and then the battery is removed, then which physical quantity remains constant? Do you think the charge is going to change? Well, no, right? For this isolated system, the charge is going to remain constant before and after. Yes? So, logically, the charge is not going to change. So, charge is going to remain constant. And now let's see if the electric field changes or remains constant when the separation is reduced. So what do you think? Well, we know that the electric field in the region between the two plates is given by Q upon A epsilon naught, that is sigma upon epsilon naught, yes? Now you can see that Q is not changing and the area is also not changing. Epsilon naught is anyway constant. So the electric field remains constant and the electric field doesn't change. This, this makes option A wrong. Yes? Now let's find out if the potential difference between the plates increases, decreases or remains constant. Well, you know that the potential difference can be given by E into D, right? Now E is constant as we discussed and D has reduced. This means that the potential difference is also reduced from its initial value. So when the plates are brought closer, then the potential difference reduces. And this makes option B also wrong. Are you with me? Yes? And now let's find out what happens to the capacitance of the system. Well, this is simple, right? So you know that capacitance is epsilon naught A divided by D, right? And if D reduces, that is the denominator of this, of this formula reduces, then obviously the capacitance is going to increase. Yes? So the capacitance of this system is going to increase as the separation is reduced. And that makes option C also wrong. And now let's see how the potential energy is decreasing, right? Right? So what is potential energy? Well, you know that potential energy is in the form of electrostatic potential energy and the formula is Q square divided by 2C. Yes? So 
potential energy is increasing or decreasing? And it's not increasing, it's decreasing, right? Why is that? Because Q remains constant and the capacitance increases. So the potential energy is going to reduce. So the electrostatic potential energy stored by this capacitor is going to go down and we have option D as the right option. Indeed, the electrostatic potential energy stored by this capacitor decreases when the plates are brought closer to each other. Now in this case, you have a capacitor of capacitance 50 microfarad that is charged with a battery of 10 volt. You have to tell that in the process of charging, how much heat is lost. And look at the options, you have to find this out in millijoule. Okay. Now who is providing the energy? Well, obviously the battery is providing the energy. And this energy is going into two places. One is the electrostatic potential energy stored by the capacitor when it is fully charged. And two in heat. And why will there be heat in the first place? Because there is charge flowing through the conducting wires. Right? And the conducting wires will have some resistance, however small. There will also be resistance, that is the internal resistance of the battery. And that is why there is heat produced in the circuit while the capacitor is charging. Correct? So basically the work done by the battery goes into potential energy stored by the capacitor plus heat. And from here we can see that heat is going to be work done by the battery minus electrostatic potential energy stored by the capacitor. So let's assume the case when the capacitor is fully charged. In that case, there will be some charge, let's say Q on this positive plate and minus Q on the negative plate, right? And the potential difference across the capacitor will be equal to the voltage of the battery that is 10 volt. Yes? And in the whole process, how much amount of charge flew through the battery? Well, this is equal to Q from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And that is why the work done by the battery is positive. Yes? Now I'm sure you might know the formula, but let me arrive at the formula so that it is conceptually clear to you. All right? So how can we arrive at the formula? Well, work done by battery is charge flown through it. That is Q into its potential difference. That is V. So Q into V. And we know Q is also equal to CV, right? So this is CV square. And the potential energy stored by the capacitor is half CV square. This we already know. So from here, the heat dissipated is going to be CV square minus half CV square, that is half CV square. So the amount of energy that is stored by the capacitor, the same amount of energy is dissipated as heat while charging this capacitor, right? So now the final step, let's put the values and find out how much is the value of this heat dissipated. So what do we have? We have the value of capacitance as 50 microfarad, that is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6, yes? And V square is going to be 100. And this is in joules. Once you simplify this, you are going to get the heat as 2.5 millijoule, right? And this is the same amount of energy stored in the capacitor as well, yes? So which option is right? Well, option B in this case is going to be the right option.